if there's ever a crutch for the carnivore diet or for keto, in fact, it's bacon. Pretty much loved by almost everyone. Bacon makes most things easier and it goes well with virtually everything. It's like a natural flavor enhancer. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And it's relatively cheap, which makes it even better. I've actually wondered at times if someone were to only eat bacon for a week, what would happen to them? Might be a good experiment. We'll find out. Let me know if you'd like to see that in a video. Probably would get expensive if I did that, even though I just said it's cheap. But anyway, I have a way of making bacon that's different than what I see most people doing. In fact, I think my way of ba making bacon is better than Dr. Ken Berry's. I know that's heresy. Not really. I think my way is better. My method is the restaurant method for making bacon. If you go to a restaurant uh, and you order breakfast, most of the time if you get bacon, it doesn't look like it was pan fried. It comes out with a nice sort of reddish hue to it, and it's got a bit more bite to it. And my way of making bacon is the restaurant way. And I'm going to show you how I do it here. So let's cut to the camera to the camera phone footage. So what we do is we're starting here with just some regular run-of-the-mill bacon. This is thick cut bacon, uh, Daly's brand. I bought it at a just a normal local grocery store. Um, I've actually not used this bacon before, but it did turn out great. So again, this is just original run-of-the-mill style thick cut bacon. I mean, is there any other way to buy bacon but the thick cut stuff? But yeah, just normal, thick, standard bacon. This isn't sugar-free. This isn't anything special. This is just your normal bacon. And yeah, you're seeing the camera sort of froze up there a little bit. But what we have here is just a standard cookie sheet. If you're interested in these cookie sheets, they go on sale periodically at Costco. And in a big pack for like 20 bucks, they're pretty great. And we're using just a normal, this is a large cookie sheet. And the reason I'm using such a large one here is I'm also cooking bacon for family. At least that's how this started. But the secret ingredient here is this, the unbleached parchment paper. This is the Walmart Great Value brand. You don't got to spend a ton of money buying, you know, the one that was like organic or whatnot. Just regular old parchment paper. And if you want a video on why we use parchment paper, let me know. Uh, but here we preheat the oven to 375 Fahrenheit. Not sure what that is in Celsius or centigrade, but we're going with a 375 degree Fahrenheit preheating time. And there we go. And now we put a slightly too large piece of parchment paper on the sheet. And you want it to be a little bit larger than usual because you don't want to lose any of the grease to the pan. Because one of the advantages of making bacon this way is it preserves the grease. And here we're just laying out the bacon. This is where it gets kind of shaky because um, you know, I had a camera, my, I had my phone in my left hand and was trying to put bacon on a cookie sheet with the right. But you'll see just laying out the bacon, super exciting stuff, I'm sure. Um, nice marbling on that, too, by the way. I got the really fatty kind. I don't know why a lot of people don't want the bacon that's got a bunch of extra fat in it. I do. It's where the flavor is. Plus, when it renders, you get some cooking tallow out of it, or you get uh, bacon grease out of it. So now the bake, the, for several minutes on a very cold day, which makes it take longer, seems to preheat, we put the bacon in the oven at 375. And now the trick on this is, Every brand of bacon is a little bit different. So I'm not putting a timer on this. I would check this at 20 minutes. This is for thick cut bacon. Okay, thick cut. If you put you put it in for 20 minutes and you come back, and this actually was a little foggy there, a little steam coming out of there, but this was after tw uh, 24 minutes in the oven. This is what it looked like. But at 20 minutes, it could look like this depending on the brand you're using. It's got a beautiful reddish golden color. And now here's the pro here's where I ran into a minor problem. The other footage I had of this after this kind of uh, got corrupted. So I had to go and make some more bacon. I know, what a problem. So here's the bacon I made just before making this video. It's before basic strips of bacon as a weird kind of midnight snack. I'm recording this video at like 2 in the morning. But you can also notice the big pool of bacon grease, which a lot of people would find off-putting, except here we're carnivores. We love this stuff. And I ended up putting it into my cast iron pan, which I had just reseasoned. And there you go. So it's when you have this bacon made this way, you end up getting something a little bit thicker. And it turns out to be just a lot better as a product, I think. And if you want to see what it looks like, I actually have it here. See, so we go like this, and once it cools down, 
it's a little, it's a kind of crispy. It's wonderful. If you like it a little softer, dial back the time a little bit. If you like it extra crispy, like practically carbonized, increase your cooking time. It's easy. This is for thick cut bacon. Now, if you want to save money on bacon, sometimes grocery stores will actually have marked down big packs of extra thick cut or thick or extra thick cut bacon. You gotta know the day of the week and what time they do it at. But sometimes you can find it. I have found bacon that way before. Whenever I find it, I try to buy all of it. Because bacon, well, it's actually got enough salt in it to preserve it for a while. So you can put it in your refrigerator just fine. It usually happens when the stores have bought too much. Let me know if you've ever made bacon like this in the comments, and if you like making bacon this way. Again, one of the great advantages to making it this way is you're going to want to have a jar on hand to put all that wonderful extra bacon grease. Plus, the color on it is wonderful. The texture of it is wonderful. And I could eat this stuff every single day if I wanted to. Let me know what you think of making bacon this way in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. Sharing this on social media helps a lot, too. Bit of a lighter video than uh, I've done in the last few days, simply because we've talked about a lot about food news in the last couple days. But subscribe if you haven't. It does help. I'm Anthony Stein, The Practical Carnivore. Thanks for tuning in.